Ohio State 42, Indiana 35. Really strange game here. Uh, I, a lot of you watched this. It was a very strange game because I was telling Colin, I was at the gym. I watched the early games at the gym because it has a great TV setup where I work out. So I got five games on five different TVs, and some would call that distraction. I just call it multitasking. But I really, as crazy as this sounds, I started to doubt our Ohio State minus 20 and a half pick when they went up 35 7. It, when you lay a big number like that, at least if you're me, I don't like a big early lead. I like a lead that gets stretched as time goes on late in the second half. Ohio State, that's a young team. That's a pretty green team. They're not veteran. They don't have a bunch of veterans on that team. Veterans, they understand how to keep their foot on the throat for four quarters. Some young guys, it's it's very it's very spiky. It's it's very, you know, hit or miss. And so, well, there's a lot of miss in the second half because that Ohio State secondary got humbled by Michael Penix and company. They got outscored 28 to 7 over the final 25 minutes of a game in the horseshoe, by the way. Um, general feeling going in did not necessarily pan out. We talked a lot about this game. We gave it its own individual breakdown, as you do, top 10 matchups. But you think to yourself, at least I thought to myself, and a lot of you guys I talked to, you kind of agreed with the sentiment, Indiana, you know, if you go in here and, and you can limit Ohio State's run, then you got a chance. If you make Justin Fields have to beat you, uh, he can probably still beat you, but you could have a chance. Well, Ohio State ran all over them. They ran for over 300 yards. Uh, it turns out they had to run because Justin Fields couldn't get the job done. I mean, 18 for 30, two touchdowns, three interceptions is about as bad as you're going to see Justin Fields play in any game, much less a big game. But yet there were the Buckeyes, 50 runs for 307 yards. And the irony is at 6.1 yards per pop, they're not crazy about the run game right now. Now, they got downhill a whole lot quicker with the bigger body type backs that they have as opposed to a J.K. Dobbins, which most people understand they should do, including their coaching staff. But the most lasting image for me from this game was Justin Fields when the clock hit triple zeros in the fourth quarter and they panned to him just shaking his head, just shaking his head, as, I, as was I and as were a lot of you. Uh, but that's... I mean, that's kind, of, that's kind of the collective mentality walking out of there. You understand and you respect the opponent and you really appreciate the win and you shake their hand, but, man, you get to the locker room and immediately, it, can, can we just start breaking it down now? I mean, can we start looking ahead now? Because we got some winnable games. I mean, who do they have? They got Illinois, uh, Miss, Michigan State, and Michigan, but we got to get so much better. I mean, we're not on Alabama's level at the moment. They would completely and totally fillet our secondary. What do we got to do to get better? So that's what the world saw. Because the world saw, eh, Justin Fields having a bad day here. I think that's what most of the world saw watching maybe from the old 50,000-foot perspective. But Ohio State fans, I think when they come out of this thing, and I'm just kind of sitting there watching with you, so you know, we turn and we watch the game together, the secondary is bad. I, I don't know. Oh, I got two pins here. I don't know any other way to put it. Ohio State secondary is just a complete and total mess. Now, that's not a shock. In fact, even getting Sean Wade back, and I'm going to talk about Wade in just a second, even getting him back, kind of put a Band-Aid on what was going to be a very green unit. By 10 miles, it was the biggest question mark for this team. So it's not like Buckeye fans are completely stunned on this Sunday evening that, oh, I can't believe our secondary. That turned out to be the weak link. The front looks good for, that, for the record, by the way, defensively, but secondary is bad here. How bad? As I read to you before, Indiana, 16 runs, negative one total yards rushing, and yet it's a nail-biter. They still had the ball with a chance to win the game in the fourth quarter. The Sean Wade opt-out, you guys remember this whole circus? It wasn't really a circus. I mean, there was a lot of uncertainty about the season, so Sean Wade opted out. Then when they announced they were going to have the season, Sean Wade opted back in. Might as well have thrown him a ticker tape parade in Columbus. It's a good thing. As it, Actually, you know, the more I think about it, it may not be a good thing. I've watched this happen with other programs. Ohio State's kind of in that rarefied air, too. When you got a lot of young guys that project as future first-round draft picks, but they're playing with other racehorses that are also first-round draft picks, and then some of those racehorses go off to the NFL draft, and some of those younger guys are kind of, by default, elevated to a top tier, sometimes they shine. Like Pat Sertain this year for Alabama shining. I mean, that's going to be a top 15 caliber guy. Uh, you never hear his name because no one ever throws at him. Sean Wade got thrown at repeatedly. They just victimized him yesterday. I think he had a pick six, which is probably the lasting impression that many had from the game. I'm telling you, if, if you're an NFL type and you pop on that tape, or for, that, for the record, if you're a 
Dabo Swinney or if you're Nick Saban and you pop on that tape and you're going to play Ohio State down the road, that's what I'm looking at. And I know Sean Wade's a big name, but, man, uh, they, he got victimized yesterday. And I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of the talent he was able to play alongside last year not being there anymore. He's an ultra-talented guy, uh, but got a ways to go to fulfill the lofty expectation that's been placed alongside his name. you got to give huge credit. And I kind of overlooked this to begin with. You've got to give huge credit to Tom Allen in Indiana because as much as they almost beat Ohio State yesterday and they were in that game and came back, as I said, 28-7. to They outscored them final 25 minutes. What struck me about Indiana is I don't necessarily know that, unlike some teams who play number one, number two, number three opponents, they never felt like they made this game a Super Bowl. It was a big game, and they understood the ramifications, but I think they'll be fine uh, coming out of this game. I don't think you'll look at them, in other words, like you do some teams who play Bama or Ohio State, and it's a Super Bowl hangover effect, and they just, they're just they never the same. I'm not telling you Indiana's going to run the table. I think their level of play will maintain a pretty consistent level. They may be the second-best team in the Big Ten right now, guys. They may be the number two team in the Big Ten. It's and, and the funny part is the battle for that number two mantle in the Big Ten is not between Michigan and Penn State or Wisconsin or Iowa. It's between Northwestern and Indiana. So now Ohio State, they kind of get – I want to let that statement sizzle for a second. All right, there we go. Now Ohio State, they kind of go into hiding. You're not going to see them in a prime position for a couple of weeks. As I said, at Illinois, I'm going to sweat that one, at Michigan State and then Michigan. So, as I said, they're not ready for Bama yet. Bama's not on the schedule yet. So, you know, Alabama, their defense didn't look too hot about a month ago. Look a lot better now. Gave up three points last night, Kentucky. So, we'll see. Time will tell. You know they have talent. Okay, that's the starting point. If they were limited talent-wise, this just would be what it is. Like Michigan at corner, they're limited talent-wise. Ohio State's got good talent. So, they got a lot of moving pieces on the coaching side and on the personnel side. We'll see what they can do over the next month.